Welcome to the weekly Wednesday Team Prosperity Meeting. Once again, this is a weekly team meeting where we got where we dive directly into things that can immediately coming out of this meeting help you with different facets of your business, whether it's marketing, whether it's managing, whether it's education, sales, no matter what your role or roles are, we try to help you guys uh, further advance your business, bring velocity to your growth. We want to have an explosion at this time of the year. Remember, we are at the time of the year where fall starting to hit, seasons are changing, people are back to school, people are coming off vacation mode. You want to make sure that you capitalize on this time. And that's one of the things that we've been talking about leading up into this meeting is how do we bring an explosion? How do we bring velocity to our business? A couple of things that we have to understand before we get into today's topic is that there is absolutely no success without commitment. No, what, no matter what you're trying to do on a professional or personal basis, if you're just trying and you're not committing, there's no promise that you're going to reach the end point of a desired outcome. So remember, um, you know, we have interest and we have commitment. There is absolutely no success without commitment. And the other thing real quick that came up, you know, you cannot treat your business like a hobby. If you treat your business like a business, it's going to pay you like a business. If you treat your business like a hobby, it's going to pay you like a hobby. You know, hobbies are fine, but they don't make you money. And they're usually expensive and they take a lot of time and money. So if you don't get serious about your money, you'll never have serious money. So we're in a serious industry that has serious solutions to serious problems. So you need to organize yourself around, you know, treating it like a business and being committed to yours, your clients and your partner's successes. Last week, we talked about creating a sense of urgency. One of the toughest things that we can do in the education sales part, but it also drifts into managing and marketing as well. One of the most difficult aspects of your business can be getting prospects to move forward uh, quickly rather than just pushing that decision off into the future at an unknown date. Prospects have their own needs and they have their own timelines, which are far more important to them than your own business needs. So how can you get prospects to act with a sense of urgency? That's what we talked about last week. And this week we are talking about Focusing on relationships. Your business is all about relationships. Being an entrepreneur, being a business owner, being a marketer, a networker, an educator, a financial service representative, whatever it is that you classify yourself as, it's all about relationships. So once you understand that and you start to focus on relationships, this business has a lot of clarity and a lot of meaning to it. Focus on the customer experience. And what you need to understand is from A to Z, what is my client or what is my prospect experience on the front side? What is my client experience on the back side? What is that whole continuing motion that they go through and how can I better that? How can I create a more efficient, more pleasurable experience for that prospect? And how can I get my clients to the point where they are so excited about what we do, the relationships, the products and the services, that they're out there creating user-generated content. They're out there creating referrals for us, and that helps our business growth. At the end of the day, remember, it's all about just those five points. So when you're talking to a prospect, potential client, we want to really try to find out, hey, where is the client right now? Where does the client want to go? How does the client get there? What is the client willing to do to get there? And how do you fit into that plan or picture? If somebody wants to do nothing, they don't need us. You know, uh, you know, the movie Office Space, the guy wanted to be rich so he could do absolutely nothing. His neighbor told him, you don't have to be rich to do nothing. He's like, my cousin's unemployed. He doesn't do anything all day. So remember, the motivating factors, the goals that people set for themselves are very important. We are, uh, we are laying out a path to get them to a desired income or a desired endpoint and outcome. Um, and once again, if that is little to nothing, they don't need us for that. On the other side, if they have goals, if they have motivating factors, if they want something that they want to create for themselves, what we also have to help them understand is if they have that fixed mindset where a lot of things are impossible, we have to reiterate and help them understand psychologically, the only impossible journey is the one you never begin. So once we map out an end desired destination, we map out a pathway, the most shortest, efficient, linear equation to get there. It's all about helping them understand that it's up to them to take the action step. And that goes back 
to what we talked about last week was creating urgency. You also, when you're forming relationships with people, you need to understand where you're going to find them. Most of the time, people are on their phone. You know, they're receiving text messages. They're online on social media platforms. So you need to understand where your client or your prospect is, how to best reach them, and the verbiage that's going to get them to respond back or the picture and the verbiage that's going to get them to stop scrolling on their social media platforms. You also have to understand if your prospect is connected to that phone, 24 seven, basically, you have to get over the phone fear. Phone fear is a real thing. And most people, you know, they're not going to make business calls because of it. We always talk about, hey, if you pick up that phone constantly every day, it's nothing. So it's, it's just ritual. It's a habit, right? However, if you haven't picked up that phone in a while, it feels like it weighs 500 pounds. So if you have call reluctance, you're not alone. Many have gone before you and many have learned how to conquer this excruciating, stressful problem. The number one thing is just to take action. If you don't know how to do something, if you're fearful of doing something, just jump in and start doing it. The better that you get on the phone, the better that you get at communicating and conversating with people, the better your business is going to be in terms of you know, just a continuous flow of prospects coming in. Also, building relationships in the 21st century with what we do with a virtual business, it's no longer about the left side, it's about the right side. You have to understand, people are going to have that first impression about what you say, how you say it, how well you understand your business assets. If you have command of simple technology and the organization of your presentation, all of this stuff replaces the old school traditional good first impression. So understand where you are in a virtual environment, how you operate and what you need to nail down to make that good first impression. Build engaged sales. That's the one, two, three steps of what you do every single day with your audience, with your business, you're building the audience around and hopefully you have personas of people that you wanna attract into that you know, business circle that you're creating. Once you attract them in there, you have to engage with them. You have to be communicative with them. You have to give them stuff they want, you know, entertain, educate, help them. And then at the right uh, appropriate time with the right person in that audience, it'll be time to sell them. Remember, you don't have this large group of people where everybody's ready to take action at the same time. That's why you're constantly building, engaging at the right time, approaching the right people uh, with how you can help them. Lots and lots and lots of communication. Um, you are, like we'll see in just a minute, in a contact business. So you have to understand if you're not contacting people, if you're not communicating with people, if you're not explaining you know, who you are, what you're all about, why you're doing what you're doing, uh, that's a very important part of the communication. And also helping them understand how you help people like them. You know, your business is going to be very, very shallow. You want your business to be deep in terms of prospects, clients. And everything that you've got in a revolving basis that's going to create what you want out of this business. When you are creating relationships, like I said, hopefully you have personas of people that you're going after. And if you have a dialed in persona, you want to make sure that you're speaking their language, not yours. If you're not speaking someone's language, then it's going to be off putting to them and they're not going to get the same type of um, understanding from what you're speaking is if you had spoken their language. So understand who you're talking to, their background, all of these things that make up them, their generation, are they baby boomers? Are they Gen X, are they millennials? And speak their language, not yours. Remember, the part of marketing and the part of mastering this communication process is learning how to open conversations with people how to continue those conversations, how to direct those conversations to an endpoint based on the information that was uncovered. And this three-part process is very, very easy once you master it to understand how you create outcomes because this is how you increase the flow of your pipeline. If you're out there building relationships, the bottom two right here, rapport. Rapport and trust and credibility. You have to be able to nail these down pretty quickly. And if you can get the rapport built, you can get some trust and credibility in there. And that can come from stuff existing online as well as the upfront communication. Once you have these two in place, you can see that uh, the information that they will now relay to you, just let them talk. That's gonna uncover a problem that you now have a solution step or a solution for that leads to an action step. 
if you never build the rapport, if you never build the trust and credibility, they're never going to give you information. They never give you information. You'll never uncover a problem. You'll never be able to give the solution, the action step. So all of this stuff right here, you know, you reverse engineer that and dissect it backwards. All components equal mastery here. So understand what you're trying to do and understand how you become better and get better at your role. And the better that you get, the better the results get. Through this process, you are doing one of the most important things that you can possibly do, which is identifying the customer need. What exactly does this customer need? What does the client uh, want? What does the client desire? And then once you're able to identify the needs in that relationship, you can help them understand the requirements to get to that desired endpoint. If you don't uncover the need, you can't give the requirements. So understand everything kind of you know, flows together. And once you understand the flow of communication, this becomes a lot easier. When you're out there trying to build relationships, you also have to understand that you know, the, the key tips in this is always anticipate resistance. Most people have fixed mindsets and the fixed mindsets absolutely always have a knee-jerk reaction to whatever is being presented. No, 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 that's just natural. So what you wanna be able to do is break through that barrier and get your prospect talking about their goals, their problems. Remember on the front end, if they're speaking 70% of the time and you're speaking 30, it's a pretty good uh, ratio. If you're speaking most of the time, that is a terrible ratio. And you're not selling anything as far as products and services, you're selling the appointment to help them get and learn how to either get to their goal or avoid that problem that they're worried about. The value that we create, you know, we have great education, we have great business relationships, client relationships, education, technology, all of this stuff. But what does that really mean? Well, it creates a value point. And that value point through the disruption is going to be different for different people. So just like we talked about, when you're building that relationship, you need to identify who this person is, what they're trying to accomplish, and then you need to create that value-based equation with the disruption in a meaningful way that actually coincides with what they're trying to do from their side. Within that, everybody's got the same basic goals. You know, a lot of people want lifestyle freedom. They want financial freedom and they want time freedom, but those are buzzwords. You can't just come out with those because those are cliche and they're basically meaningless. What you have to do is understand the underlying foundation of what people really want and then break that down into a more specific subset of what that person is actually talking to you about with their life. We mentioned this a few minutes ago, you're in a contact business. So your business on the front side is about, you know, building your brand. It's about communicating with people. It's about opening conversations. It's about asking questions. It's about showing interest in other people so you can build interest in what you do. This is a pretty simple formula, guys. The more contacts that you have, the more contracts you're going to be signed, whether that's technology, whether it's financial services, no matter what it is, the more people you talk to, the more deals are going to flow. The less people you talk to, the less deals are going to flow. It's a pretty elementary equation, but at the end of the day, it's something that you have to understand, digest, and absorb because if you're not out there openly communicating, getting excited about what you can do for people, then there's not going to be much business coming through and you're going to get not as excited and you're going to get down to that valley of despair that we talk about the emotional cycle of change. And if you're not willing to push through to the other side, we've talked about this, you quit, you start over and you end up right back at the same position you were. So get over the hump, understand that what we do is meaningful and important and go out there with a sense of urgency behind your actions and your communication that flows over to the other side. One of the ways that you can do that is get mission-based. Yes, if a client comes in and they sign up for our services, you make money and that's great. You have your goals, you have uh, your motivating factors and those are definitely important. But what you can do to help yourself is understand what we do for the client is so important that if that client, you know, you don't reach that client, you don't meet with that client, you don't help that client, it has a negative impact on their future financial journey. So understand that the high cost of waiting, paying yourself first, um, you know, compound interest, rule of 72, debt elimination, canceling interest, basically the how money works program that we have is so important. So if you understand the mission, then it's not all about just you. It's about who we can influence because 
We're on a mission to change the financial landscape of this country. And if you're mission based, those little excuses that you normally let into your mindset, those evaporate because now you're on a mission to help people. And when you're on a mission to help people, it's easier to be seen and heard because you know you have something that's helpful. You know you have something that's important and timely. And you go out there and you start to spread the word. And that goes all the way back to starting the conversation. If you never open your mouth to start a conversation, there's nothing I can do or your partners can do or this organization or the technology can do to help you. You have to learn how to start a conversation. And that can be as easy as asking a question. You know, if you've got a list of questions, and we talk about this like a blind date, if you're good at asking questions and letting people talk about themselves, people love to talk about themselves. Ask the questions, get the information that uncovers the problem, solution, action step. Everyone's got a story. Your client's got a story. You've got a story. And when it becomes your time to talk, you have to hone your story. You know, not some long drawn out you know, story of your lifetime, but you know, quickly, who are you? What are you all about? You know, why are you doing what you do? You know, that mission-based philosophy. And they will always go through the process of helping you guys understand that facts tell, stories sell. So you have to have a good story that includes, you know, a little bit about yourself, your brand, why you're doing what you're doing, and how you help other people similar to the person that you're talking to. And along with that story, you need to raise awareness. This is not the time where in, in history or the environment where people can just sit back and expect things to fall in place. You have to be active. You have to come out and you have to have a plan of action with execution. You know, there's a meme out there that circulates sometimes. You know, nobody ever wrote down a plan to be fat, broken, stupid. That's what happens when you don't have a plan. Now, it's kind of a negative, you know, conversation and meme, but it's important. You have to raise awareness that financial wellness might have might have been a nice to have item in the, in the past it is a must have going forward or you're going to get rolled over uh, in this economy so that top of the funnel when you are building relationships the awareness of what we do backed with the education helping them understand that there are possibilities and there are ways that they can create what they actually want in life that does the rest of what we need because if you can create awareness we can get them into education. That education, what we do, creates interest, creates consideration, creates decision, and creates action steps. So a marketer's job is really just the awareness. We'll handle the education. If you can get good at the awareness part and booking meetings for us, we will take care of the rest for you. You can grow into those roles in the future, but you don't have to. So as you're out there and you're building relationships and you're developing personas, you want to start to look for pain points that you can solve. Remember, there are different things that motivate your audience, the pleasure, the feel good scenario or avoiding the pain. And a lot of times avoiding pain is a stronger motivating factor. It's the old comparison, the carrot versus the stick. Uh, there are a lot of pain points in the economy right now that people are suffering with. I tend to go out and look for ways that I can help solve those and actually turn those pain points into an advantage. Remember, converting debt to wealth, that process is an amazing process for the client to go through. Alignment and engagement. So if you're talking to the same type of people, if you're trying to build relationships with the same type of people continuously, it's a lot easier to build that alignment and engagement versus trying to be everything to everyone. It, you know, people will be able to see right through that. So who's in your persona? Who are you talking to? Who are you trying to build relationships with? Where are they found? What are you saying to these people that raises their hand, says, yes, I want more information about that. Along that process, uh, yes, you're doing some things to help the prospect understand what we can potentially accomplish for them. But you're also helping yourself understand, hey, do I want to spend time with this person? You know, Also known as, are they a qualified prospect? If they are, continue the conversation. If they are not, don't waste your time, don't waste their time, be upfront with them, understand once you get to a disqualification point, you need to close that conversation down. A healthy client relationship is ongoing, just like a healthy partner relationship is ongoing. So don't think that when your client gets through the point of the education, the reports, makes an action step to you know, activate their technology or, or go further with some of the other products and services that we sell, you don't just drop them off and say, hey, have a good time. Let me know when it's all said and done in six or seven years. 
you have to continue to work with those people. By working with them, you can get some more things accomplished for them. But remember, it's all about referrals and it's all about user generated content. If the client now has seen the value, recognized the value, now you come in. Who else do you know and care about that needs to know this information? So a healthy ongoing relationship is important for you as the partner, as well as is important for the client to make sure they're reaching their goals. And like I just said, at a certain point, you're going to be able to get comfortable enough. Hey, who else do you know? Who else can we help out similar uh, to you um, that we can lead? Free guides, free education. Remember, the very least somebody walks away with is some newfound concepts, strategies, and education they can implement on their own side. Uh, the best they can possibly walk away with is a relationship with us where we're going to kick butt and get them to a point where they probably didn't even realize was possible. On the partnership side, you are building relationships on both sides. And partnership is kind of similar to the client, a little bit different because just like the client, you need to make sure that you're not selling partners on this opportunity. You need to start similar to the client by starting to interview, asking questions. What do you do? How's it going? What do you like about it? What do you not like about it? What problems are you running into? Remember, asking questions, getting information on both sides, client and partner, unveils problems, leads to solutions, leads to action steps. You need to continuously ask questions. That's just not the primary questions. That's the secondary follow-up questions. You're getting to the point where you're getting some good information. Hey, can you tell me a little bit more about that? Can you expand on that? You get to important information. Don't just close it off. Have the person expand. And then identify really what's happening in this conversation. If nothing's happening, two sides are just talking. It's like a dog chasing its tail. There's no end outcomes. There's no next action steps. And really, both of you have wasted your time. So understand what are the goals? What are the targets? What are the objectives of this conversation? And make sure that you are keeping the conversation on track. At the end of a partner conversation or during a partner conversation, just like the client, you are trying to connect the dots, those five points. Remember, where are they now? Where do they want to go? What are they willing to do to get there? How do I help? How do I fit in? All those things. Same thing with the partner side. Connecting the dots to see if we can form a mutually beneficial relationship and understand the commitments that it will take from both sides. And if we can commit and make that, um, you know, relationship on the partner side, you get what you negotiate out of life in general, but especially when you're trying to build an agency. If you're talking to people who have practices, who have all this stuff going on, if you can negotiate, hey, how can I help you monetize an existing book or business without really having to do too much? How can I help grow your income without changing really what you're doing? How can I get you more leads? Whatever the problem is that you've uncovered in those partner conversations, if I can show you a way to do X, Y, and Z, whatever it is, you know, does it make sense to continue the conversation? Does it make sense to partner up? It's a negotiation process continuously. Through that negotiation process, you have to identify, just like on the client side, you know, is this person that I'm talking to, are they interested or are they committed in their life, their business, their goals, and their dreams? Because interest is very easy to have. Commitment is something far different. We are looking for commitment to end goals. You can't want this more than they want it for themselves. That's on the client side, but especially the partner side, because as they come in, remember, if you've got that commitment on the, on the front side and you guys have agreed upon that, you can call them out. Hey, I'm doing what I said I was going to do for you. You're not doing what you are doing or you said you were going to do. Remember, the quicker, the shorter, the faster that you can find out that people you know, are not committed to this process, the easier it is to disqualify them and get rid of them. You don't want to bring in a partner and then six months later find out you should have disqualified them five minutes into the first conversation. Creating high performance sales teams is a process in which that on the front side, you are bringing in good partners. And then on the back side, you are making sure that you are continuously contacting your team. Now, once again, you can't want it more than somebody else wants it for themselves. But if your partners are trying, they're attempting, they're having activity, it's your job to train, support, coach, mentor your agency growth. If you're not contacting your team, if you're not working with the people that are trying to make it happen in a virtual environment, they feel like they're on a desert island. If they feel alone with no support, they're going to drift and they're going to quit. 
you're going to get better the more practice that you have. And creating high performance sales teams means that you're working with your partners to make sure they understand their roles and then how to most effectively and efficiently take their role and pass it off to that next person who's going to help in that line of communication, whether it's education, sales, management, whatever it might be. Nail down your job and then understand the person's jobs next to me, what that entails, and then get that handoff as smooth as possible. Also, another way that you can create high performance sales teams is to lock your partners in with ownership. So, you know, bringing people in, if I can lock them in with ownership, then guess what? Now they have something to lose and now they have something to be attached to. So understand that you want to build wide and you want to build deep and building deep means you're locking in partners that are hopefully distribution partners in for the long run. So closing remarks for today, guys, you want to make sure that you understand your role. And then no matter what that role is, you have to build relationships. And that means getting obsessed with helping people. If you get obsessed with helping people, if you understand what we can do as far as in outcomes for people, what that means for them, their inner circle, uh, the people that are around them, including their family, if you get obsessed with helping people, the money will start to flow in a big way. And building solid relationships build a long lasting business. So that's all we have for this week, guys. I appreciate you attending the recording. We'll put this out on social media uh, for your partners of you that can't make it.